All right. Right on. All right, our final album of the evening. We're going to have a short episode tonight, Josh. <laughs> yeah, in and out, man. Maybe to much, maybe to uh, many people's, uh, you know, preference. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so R.E.M. covering their, I think this is their third album, Fables of the Reconstruction. Mm-hmm. It comes in at number 171 in the 1980s on Best Ever Albums, number 16 in 1985, number 1087 of all time. It's R.E.M.'s 10th highest rated album on best ever albums so tenth. we are 10th yeah and so it's 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 behind the ones that we've covered already which murmur at number two and reckoning at number six but we're going to do automatic for the people document out of time life's rich pageant green i don't know if we're going to do monster monster new adventures in hi-fi i'm not sure if we're going to cover those we'll see those are hmm. 90s albums but um but yeah this is number 10 um not on Rolling Stones list, and REM is ranked number twenty of overall artist rankings on best ever albums. Oh wow! So what? What was Talking Heads? They were in the twenties too, right? I think. What do you, oh for overall, overall artist rankings? I don't know. I, I have to go back and look at it. They were yeah, they were in the they were yeah. not as highly ranked as as REM. Yeah, uh, REM another band that we'll be covering a lot of their their oh, music yeah. for sure. Um, I so. Uh, uh, and you know, know less REM than I do. You're not you're not like the REM guy, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, I have I'm I'm I am an REM neophyte for sure. Uh sorry sorry, Talking Heads is twenty one of overall oh, artists. Okay. So 20, REM 20? is twenty, Talking Heads okay. is twenty <laughs> is twenty one. So there you go. Oh wow. Who's nineteen? Yep. Just out of curiosity. Uh hey, hang on a sec. Uh uh twenty one overall artist rankings nineteen is Bruce Springsteen. Uh, okay. All right, interesting. That's a whole separate discussion. I want to know if we have, if we covered all the artists in the top twenty so far. Um, we have covered. I mean, Radiohead's Arca- Ar- got to be okay. Up. Arcade Fire is number eight. <laughs> what? Wait, yeah, I that's I call bullshit on that. I like Arcade Fire. I know John would be John would be apoplectic at that. Um, they're ahead of the Velvet Underground. Arcade Fire is eight. Velvet Underground is nine. That's that's just yeah. Uh, Kendrick Lamar is eleven. We haven't covered him okay. yet. Uh, Kanye West is 16 and the Pixies are 17. We're about okay. to cover, we're going to cover the Pixies soon, but um, end of the decade, right? Everybody else in the top 20 we've covered. Interesting. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. Arcade, Arcade Fire, Fire is overrated. not. <laughs> yeah. Some, <laughs> some, 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 some drunk programmer got into best ever albums like server and like threw that in there and, and never got it out. Funeral and, and uh, their first cup couple albums were so like best of the, right okay and, stuff. and funerals like... are fat i can't wait that's a great album we're gonna but right. come on come yeah. on eight no. no 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 it should be weighted for like time time on the uh yeah it just stage <laughs> yeah I, I well anyway we could we'll probably yeah. cover that when we get to them but yeah so. yeah so um an, another strong effort from rem this one was so uh, you know fables of the reconstruction is such a kind of telling title i was trying to pay attention to whether or not it was a concept album if there was any kind of through line um from from song to song and or even kind of overall sonically if there was kind of something that tied it all together and it it may be a loose concept album i certainly didn't see any story um, or kind of overall like rock opera type of thing that we've seen in the past. Um, I think it, I think it kind of touches on the South since they're from Georgia. Um, that's probably kind of the strongest theme overall. I, the more I hear them, the more I love the guitar that they have on this album. Um, and, and overall Peter Buck's guitar is just great. Um, I'm seeing on this album that it kind of has a darker, feel to it i think um if not if not emotionally then then through the guitar and some of the the singing um it, that first track feeling gravity's pull is is such an interesting opening track it there they hang on this one note often throughout the song it's it's kind of an ominous sound it also reminded me of nirvana in some ways it's like some of this stuff like kind of presaged some of the things they do with guitars, I feel like in Nirvana and later on in, in kind of the grunge, maybe some like, I don't know, some proto proto grunge in between Neil Young and, and, and all of those pants somewhere along the way. It's uh 
they incorporate strings um, throughout this album and on that opening track uh, ex- extremely well, and they really pack a punch for me. Um, if it's, if, I think it's there's multiple different uh, strings on this album. I think there's cello and and some other things as well. Uh, Maps and Legends was a a song I really kind of struggled with. It felt kind of really repetitive and and maybe a little I don't know derivative of some of their other of their other stuff. But then they come back with Driver Eight, which is probably one of the strongest tracks on this album. I think it's probably one of the one more well known tracks um, from it or, or a single. Um, I it sounded familiar to me, but um, not enough that I would. It felt fresh to me. Uh, it's got a catchy chorus. There's this c- guitar bridge between the choruses that is so um, is so great, and and then they start uh, with life and how to live it. Uh, this is where I feel like I started paying attention to the lyrics a lot. I thought the song might be about Jesus, but <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't sure. Um, the the lyrics are kind of complex. They he sing, Michael Stipe sings it in a really different, uh, interesting way. It doesn't always uh, end in kind of a an easy manner. He like sings to the next verse or in the next line of the song. Um, when you're reading the lyrics, uh, it's it's hard to explain. But when you listen to it and read the lyrics, it makes sense. <laughs> so maybe my recommendation is to do that. Um, but one of the lines from that that I really liked are my carpenters out and running about talking to the street. Um, and so it's kind of got this, oh, my pockets are out and running about uh, barking in the street to tell what I have hidden there. So you can see there, it's kind of abstract lyrics. You don't know what exactly he's singing about, but uh, uh, it works really well for them. Uh, Old Man Kenzie is is a uh, another song that kind of reminded me of grunge in some way. It's a somber song. It's about this guy who becomes a clown um, or is kind of looked down upon. Um, there's this uh, this drum bass line that is is really great in that. And then they go into uh, can't can't get there from here, which is another one of my favorite songs on this album. It's kind of got this country twang. Um, I love the guitar in it. And then they used sax, uh, I think two different types of sax, and they end it with baritone sax, which just kind of really punctuates the whole song and works. Um, kind of have to hear it to to believe it, but it works really well for me. And and then they um, green grow the rushes, which really sounded like the birds. You know, they kind of get that comparison sometimes, I think. Um, with their harmonizing and that, that really sounded like a bird song to me and then Cahotec which I looked it up I was like what is this it's apparently a comet which I didn't know <laughs> the name of a comet and uh, and uh, it sounds like the I don't know if it was just me but it sounded like the music was was more upfront than the vocals were I don't know if that's intentional or not uh, but uh, that was that was interesting and then you know, you got four other four other tracks. I don't want to go through all of them, but they um, good advice. Well, I'll go through one more. Good advice has a has a line that says, "A familiar face, a foreign place. I forget your name. I'd like it here if I could leave you and see you from a long way away." And that's just. I think that's just a testament to their strong writing throughout and their ability to tell stories and kind of. I, they kind of have this REM overall. I'm trying to describe how in my head how they sound they kind of they've got this like southern kind of gothic country aspect to them but they're also kind of rock and roll and they're also um kind of like americana in some ways as well um so they kind of are a mishmash of different things but it's it's just another strong effort from them i think overall um, i just love the guitar in it I, that's the thing that's standing out to REM for me more and more is is really the guitar and kind of their music even though Michael Stipe is a great singer and I feel like he he adds he's an essential part of the band I, I pay attention to him less um, mm-hmm. when listening to their albums than than the music um, so what did you think of this one 
Yeah, I well, I have to say, while you were going through each song, I I was on mute and I was like just listening to the songs to remind okay. myself. I have to do that sometimes because I don't. Yeah. I typically don't take notes and and stuff. But um, oh, you're I, with free, free will and Bob Dylan over there. Free will, and totally. <laughs> I I love this record, and I I loved it in a different way that I loved the other the first two, the the Murmur and Reckoning. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember saying particularly with Murmur. Um, and I know I do remember I listened to that album quite a bit that week, um, you know, probably upwards of like eight or nine times Oh, yeah. uh, um, a lot, you know. And I remember saying, you know, as I went along, I, when I first started, it all kind of blended together. It seemed like a very similar kind of song. But then mm-hmm. the more I listened to it, I was able to parse some things here, here and there. Um, and to a lesser extent, I found that similar with 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 Reckoning. This album, it's it's a couple of things. I think darker is definitely. You you said I would agree with that. There's there you're getting some more minor key things happening. It seems yes. like um, some darker tones with with the music. Um, and so in some ways it's it sounds a little bit more mature. And it it definitely so the songs sound different to me. Like there's more of a distinction between these songs than I got with the first two records. And yeah. Um, I, and and I like that, you know. I like something juxtaposing something like Driver Eight against Old Man Kenzie, and or or feelings gravi- feeling gravity's pull. What a way to start an album! Like just a, that took me by a surprise. I was like yeah. from the opening licks, the guitar part. I was like this this discordant, you know, kind of um, you know notes that they were plucking. I was like, what is what is that, you know? And then. It didn't Auction. really, Auc- yeah, yeah. Go ahead. It, Sorry, it didn't deviate away from like kind of a darker undertone, but I liked it. You know, mm-hmm. um, I liked the darker undertone of old man, old man Kenzie. You know, and um, and uh, it, it, and so I just I don't know. It gave it a little bit more heft, I thought, than the first two records, and I was mm. surprised. I'm like, this is their tenth highest rated album. This is. Uh, this is better than monster you know like Mm -hmm. you know we haven't gotten it's a totally different sounding album but i i really liked it um and i i i but but you still have other classic rem stuff like driver eight you're right that's probably that's that's the one song on here that i knew you know pretty well um life and how to live it's another upbeat you know kind of kind of song like that i I agree i agree but i can't get there from here it's got a cool uh chorus where you can get the you get the mike mills background vocals going in full Mm -hmm. effect there that's pretty cool but yeah you've got the other country elements i liked wendell 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 gee was uh the banjo at the end of that i thought that that was a really nice pleasant way to end the record um it's just solid man i just these three albums the ones that i'm not that familiar with really I'm like, why did I, why did I not listen to these earlier? You know, cause I liked all the other ones. It's not like I didn't like green or document or, you know, you know, out of time or anything like I loved all those records, you know? Um, and I just, it's just one of those things. I think it just gets traced back to, you know, the time in my life where you, in order to listen to music, you had to go out and you had to go buy, pluck 15 to $20 on a <laughs> yeah. CD, you know, 12, if you were, if you got it on, sale right um you know and it was a commitment right you getting albums is a commitment and then you're listening Mm -hmm. to them and and so you know you're kind of that's the thing with music is is there's all the catalog is only getting bigger right you you know so like you're trying to keep up with new stuff but then like you don't want to forget about the old stuff that you've that you like and then there's the old stuff that you never knew and that's one of the cool things about doing the podcast is because you know I don't think I, I don't know if I ever would have gone back and listened to the Velvet Underground or Talking Heads or, yeah. you know, if we haven't done this. So um, so unless you're forcing yourself in some way to, to listen to these, it's, they can easily escape you. And these are just these are just examples of albums that escaped me. And and I'm really glad I, I love John. I'm glad he missed this week because I wouldn't listen. I don't know. I, I You know, I, maybe I would have gone back to this at some point, but. The way the podcast is going, I'm just like, what's what's next? What What's the next thing? I'm, that's that's what mm-hmm. I do that week. But. I really liked. I, I I saw some progression here with the band, um, some musically. Um, I I think you bring up an interesting point about his 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 vocals or the like the guitar standing out for you, Josh, more so than the than the than the vocalist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Michael Stipe's got a really interesting voice because at times he just he sounds like a almost like a dud of a singer because he he's just like mumbling and like groaning through the song you know mm. which I, I i'm okay with i don't i don't I, I think it and i think when he chooses to do those things it suits the song pretty well but it's not it's not always an inspiring you know uh vocalist you know he's kind of he's he's mopey you know he's a little he's a little he's a bit, bit of a downer sometimes yeah. but you know and but then he can still like bring it and he can still you know he can still um you know bring bring the energy and kind of and he's got a great voice i'm not i'm not trying to you know 
you know, uh, you know, downplay his voice, but I, I maybe I, maybe I'm a little bit, but it's but he does. I can see why it could be off putting to some people. He's like, oh, <laughs> like, you know. Um, but I agree with you. To to me, REM is is Peter Buck's guitar. I mean, that's the that is the singular thing that just kind of keeps coming back no matter what they do. It's like it's his guitar. It's um it's Mike Mills' backing vocals to be quite honest to get it to, to give it that um that heft in the background when he, when he comes in, it just adds this other layer that just puts the songs over the top for me. And his just, I just love the guitar tone that, that jangle stuff that came from yeah. the birds and, you know, and George Harrison really with the Rickenbacker, you know, guitar. And then it just bled into so many other alt rock bands and, you know, Decemberists and all these bands that I love now, literate rock as John would you know, likes to refer to it as, or other people do, I guess. And he repeats it, but, um, I, yeah, this was, this was great. I love this from the moment. And I, and I, I might like this better than the other two, just as for the listening experience, because I was, I was more drawn into this. I think I, I, this to me was a little bit, was more interesting, you know, sonically than the other two. I thought that they were branching out and doing yep. different things. Yep. Um, I, 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 I hesitate to say that it's better, but, um, in the context of comparing my, you know, reaction to this album with the other two. I, I think I overall I was more into this album. I was feeling this more than the other two. So I'm definitely a thumbs up on on this I, one. I think you're right. I think they are kind of growing more as a band and, and kind of pushing themselves in this album. Uh, if not only just from having Feeling Gravity's pull being the opening track, yeah. it's hard to overstate how different that sounds than yeah. the rest of of the previous albums then radio yeah. free europe right yeah. i mean that <laughs> the yeah. opening song and then they do that i could i could see people buying this going like what the hell like expecting yeah. one of those other albums and getting this and being like what are they doing like you know this off-putting you know and i yeah. i didn't really do any history but i wouldn't be surprised if this was like a considered a step back or like you know whatever um right but yeah Another example of that different sound that we're talking about is Auctioneer, another engine in parentheses. It has this real like flat guitar line and delivery, and, mm. and it almost sounds like off key, like they are, yeah. or, or they're playing in a minor key or something, knowing nothing about musical uh, notes. But it, it, it just sounds completely different. It has this wailing, almost wailing quality to it, uh, or it's like a lament or a dirge or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's just different than than the rest of the the tracks. So I think there is differentiation here. I, I think I agree with you. I think I said that it took me multiple listens to kind of parse out some of the songs from their first album, and then but this is, these are these are much more distinct, and hmm. they are they I think they are pushing themselves a bit more yeah also too, to your point about michael stipe i think he is he's not a traditional front man i think he is more part of the band as a whole as opposed to being kind of the the symbol of rem or like in the way that you know like robert plant is for led zeppelin or some of these more like traditional rock acts where or or Mick Jagger or anything like that, you know, where he is like such kind of the spotlight. I think he yeah. Stipe kind of incorporates himself more and and interplays with the music more a bit. Uh, he's he's a, he's also more of a serious musician than some of those other. I mean, REM never struck me. They're definitely not like a Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, like party, like yeah. let's go get the chicks and like you know drinking and debauchery and all that stuff. I mean, he's. He's a very serious, and then you see him interviewed, and he's like this very serious guy that's got mm -hmm. like very contemplative, and and a lot of times it doesn't seem like he likes the the spotlight at all. You know, it seems very uncomfortable in interviews, and mm -hmm. and um, he's not a traditional front man in that regard. Um, but then you see him, but then you see some of the live performances, and he's really he really gets into it. It's one of oh. those things where I think you got a, a really quiet, introverted type person that can really come out of their shell when they're when they're doing this performance and they can this character or this aspect of themselves can really come out but i i don't know michael stipe i remember you know when when rem got big in the early mid 90s he yep. definitely seemed to be much more the front man or, or at least the, the the spokesperson of the band so when they would get interviewed and stuff or he you know he 
people that Bill Bill Barry wasn't real. He was kind of off to the background. You know, Peter Buck would give interviews and stuff like that. But Michael Stipe was still the face of the band as well, mm. I, it, for, to my recollection. And yeah. it's it's he's just such an interesting figure in, in rock music because he just he's an unassuming kind of non traditional front man that's kind of nerdy and kind of very serious and almost. He almost he always sounds depressed and very sad and melancholy and you know what yeah. I mean, which it is He's like guess, an introverted front man. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and um but but I can see why other people are put out like, what is this this guy? What is his deal? you know, but um but when they blew up, man, they got they were huge and um and he did and he didn't just cower away from that. He he kind of embraced that, you know, mm. um on stage and you know, doing the videos and, uh, you know, using that as a plat- platform for his politics. I think that that was probably something that he was was definitely, um, you know, calculated on his end. So, yeah, very interesting guy. For, yeah, for, I think yeah. Losing My Religion was definitely the song yeah. I remember hearing as a kid. Um, that's definitely the first star. Yeah, that's the one that, that, that from there, they, they took off after that. So, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's actually you're right, Josh. This, I did, I'm seeing here it is a concept record. It's okay. a concept album, <laughs> okay. and uh, lyrically, the album explores the mythology and landscape of the South. So um, okay, there you go. It's all about the South. I don't know much about the South then, because even though I've lived there, I I didn't pick up on any. I, I don't know what the mythology of the South is, I guess, other than slavery, yeah. but which I is I mean, with his mythology. At all. Yeah, they do. They actually, if you do the, if you go through Wikipedia here, they basically go through every song and they give you, I'm not going to read through all of it, but they do explain what some of the messages or the, the meaning behind some of the songs yeah. is. So okay. you can go check that out. But, um, but yeah, man, this is good. We're just getting there. You know, there's plenty more left to go. I'm I'm excited for you. This is like reminiscent of when we got you into. You haven't you haven't heard Use Your Illusion yet? Oh, Josh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're gonna you know. So like part of this is like a little excitement for you to kind of go down here because um, but but it's it's they're all strong. I mean, REM's another really consistent band. I they're they're the they latter stuff, the stuff that we're probably not going to cover. Um, you know, they they do uh, they go in some different directions for sure. Um. Some some good, some not so good, I think. Mm-hmm. But uh, but overall, so far they're three for three. So um, and this was just I was surprised. I I I I I didn't see it going in this direction. And I think your comparison to kind of like the grunge in the '90s, you know, that I, I think that there's something to be said for that because there is that that sal- sad and melancholy undertone, mm-hmm. um, minor key stuff that's that with similar with that stuff that's happening here too. Yeah, yeah. This is. Um... It's just, I guess, it's a, a tribute to their their ascent as we go from album to album up to the where they hit it big. I mean, yeah, in terms of that. So, um, I don't. Would you start? I, I don't think this would be a good place to start with no. them, but uh, but it's definitely like like a it's like advanced not advanced studies, but like intermediate studies. It's yeah. Areas. This is a deeper cut. I mean, I wouldn't. I, I you know. God, I don't know where you would start with REM. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I, I could see it being murmur. I could see it being out of time to be to be quite I mean, out of time they're more they're more poppy album. Yeah. Um and that's the one that that they took off from that, that really blew up. But um but it's also not a lot of their stuff is accessible. I mean, even stuff on here for as as quote unquote dark and like, you know, 